Our speaker this morning is a member of our church who reside in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's not far. It's just Oba. It's not very far. It's Oba. And um, we are glad that she was able to be here. She has been here, but she is just living, going back to the U.S. And we thought it is good for her to come and uh, connect with the family. Cindy, connect with the family. Let's appreciate and welcome Apostle D to come and share the word of God with us today. Hallelujah. Now let's give the Lord God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 As we're still yet standing for a couple of moments, let's just lift our hands where we are. We're going to just ask the Holy Spirit to just fill us up. Hallelujah. As we get into the message this morning, we do appreciate and honor the man and woman of this house, my general here in Kenya, which is none other than Bishop Kamadi and Pastor Alice and all of you here today. I welcome also and want to acknowledge my husband, Bishop Jeff Davis in Cincinnati, Ohio, and our congregation back there. It is always an honor and a privilege to be in the midst of my brothers and my sisters here at Deliverance Zimmerman because this is where I first, hallelujah, this was the place of my first when I first started coming to Kenya. So this definitely is a place that is my home and will always be my home. But as we lift up our hands today in the sanctuary and begin to just take a moment to meditate on his goodness and begin to establish communion with the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to say thank you. Lord God, we want you today to fill us up. Father, we want you to fill us up till we overflow. Father, everything that you have already ordained from the beginning, O King, you said that it is earmarked in glory and we bring it on earth as it is in heaven. Now, Lord, we just want to today to agree with you. We bring our flesh under subjection and into the obedience of you. That in the spite of it being weary at times, God, you yet lift it up, blow a new breath in and begin to, Lord God, give us another, hallelujah, grace to keep moving. Father, now we just want to say in this little commemoration to you to just fill us up. Hallelujah. Want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up till I.
small voice until everything becomes silent to where nothing is moving but you oh glory you see because it is in the still small voice that we proclaim our victory it's where we can command the blessings to overtake us exploits in our life but we realize that it's not in the storm and it's not in the earthquake but it's in the still small void so we begin today God just to get in cadence with the still small voice we thank you we thank you we thank you Glory, God. In Jesus' name. That should bring us to a place of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. You can be seated today. Glory unto thee, O Father. I have a few things that I'm going to share with you. If you have pen and paper, I'm going to do more talking. Mm -mm. Glory. I'm going to give you the scriptures and we'll, we'll hit them. If we don't hit all of them, then you go back at your leisure and you read them. I'm coming from Romans, the 12th chapter, 19th verse. Then we will um, possibly read the second Chronicles 20, 20 through 22 through 27. <clears throat> but our key focus will come from the Exodus passage 8 and 15. Today's message, we're going to be dealing with twofold. One being, we know that we are in the season of open heavens. Many have said that many seasons have passed before us that has um, placed us in the mindset that it's a cliche or it's just something to say. But when you're aligned with the kingdom, the projection and the deliverance and the declaration of knowing the time and the season prepares you to literally be in the place to understand that you and I are the walking manifestation of open heavens. Today we're going to be just quickly and briefly looking at open heavens, which means that when you walk in this place from a kingdom perspective, it means that we walk in victory without fighting. We walk in a place to where we already see the provision that gives us the ability to go into our regions, our lands, our call, our commission, our assignment, and perfect it on earth as it is in heaven. Because we realize that it's only by what the Lord Jesus Christ paid for us that has declared and decreed our victory and sealed our victory to accomplish on earth what it is in heaven. Amen. I'm going to give you two points so I can get this in the way but yet out. We're going to deal with two perspectives, the Sabbath rest and the dominion rest. As we live in open heaven, we walk, we rule, we speak, we declare, we ignite and engage the kingdom on earth from a posture of dominion. Dominion rest. Many of us today have caught the glimpse of what it looks like to have the latest everything the latest phones, the latest technology, the latest things that move quick. You know, 
We don't have to do a lot of research. We don't have to do a lot of digging. We just have to press a button or say a word and something will pop up into an external system that will give us what we desire. How many of us know we have those places? The phones, our computers, our laptops. You can speak to one of those, those instruments or that equipment and it just does the work for us. But today I'm here to say that those are great user-friendly tools, but they can't tap into the rim of glory that God needs us to press through as we read the daily bread out of this word. I'm saying we don't need no one to translate it from a context that we need to gain their interpretation. We need to gain the interpretation of Holy Spirit that will give us the understanding as we walk under open heaven in this season. How does that apply to me to where I can go even in the midst of what I'm going through and gain my victory? See, we have these gadgets, we have these systems, but we still yet don't have no rest. Today we look at what works together to expand us, to help us to fill ourselves and to find a place of rest. But one thing I want you to know about both Sabbath and dominion rest that it says that it originated as a gift from God. This Sabbath and dominion rest originated in Genesis as a gift of God, but today we have a choice whether to receive this gift. So as we quickly look here, Sabbath rest is a time of rest. Sabbath rest is a time of rest that is regularly repeated time when we cease from normal work. So that means that we come together on Sundays and we have other services, but one, sir, one day may be, which is or could be, which most do use Sunday as the day for Sabbath. But when we look, or it could be another day. But when we look at this rest, it talks about that we cease from our normal things. That means all that we've toiled through the first six days of whatever that context looks like, we then choose to make a decision to use this one day to engage the rest that positions us in the presence of God to where he refreshes us and he gives us a kingdom strategy to come back and continuously do what he needs us to do in the earth and be blessed. So, this, this Sabbath rest, it brings a mental, a physical, and an emotional respite. We come here to praise the Lord, to give him thanks, to celebrate. But then there's this time where the pressures and the responsibilities of life even become lifted in the midst of our gathering. And we simply begin to experience his goodness. But that is a gift of God that was patterned from the beginning at creation that was woven into the fabric of the universe. And one of God's wills was for us to rest one day out of seven. This was important to God because he included it as one of the Ten Commandments. Failing to keep the Sabbath is as much as a violation to God as killing, stealing, destroying, or being disobedient. The New Testament says that the Pharisees had turned what was meant to be a blessing into a religious burden to be lived under. But the New Testament says, according to Colossians 2.16, it says, do not let anyone judge you regarding your Sabbath. See, the goal here today in the New Testament is to restore the Sabbath into its original covenantal purpose. So God, we can gain the blessings from God. It is a time.
time today for us to rest and enjoy the blessings of what this Sabbath looks like. Why do we observe the Sabbath? God commanded it as an act of worship. To acknowledge his greatness as the creator. The Sabbath is a picture of heaven anticipating the day when we will rest from our work and enjoy him forever. It is designed to restore us and give us strength for the battles that's ahead. This is the Sabbath rest. When we rest, it renews us, it refreshes us, it energizes us. And we can keep moving even when everything else is standing still. This is a strategic mapping that will give us the ability to move from the Sabbath rest to the dominion rest that allows us to walk and to live under the open heavens from victory without fighting. It's a season of now the kingdom manifestations being manifested and declared and decreed through his servants that begins to cause invasions into the rims of places that's been holding up our stuff for so long. But the only way that we're going to be able to recover them if we discover the significance and the importance of Sabbath rest and dominion rest. Now, here's two points that are significant. Sabbath rest is a time of rest. And dominion rest is a place of rest. I'm going to say that again. Sabbath rest is a time of rest. And dominion rest is a place of rest. So, I'm going to give you a great example. When we come here to praise and worship the Lord, our King, and give him glory, and when we come together to just have this experience and this explosion and his presence, it brings some oil. Because we have to go back into those places that has been earmarked in glory for each of us to go and take dominion over. But the only way we're going to take dominion over them, if we identify within our spirit, through the Holy Spirit, what is our, our unique assignment that God has given us all to impact and to go and to get our inheritance walking and living under an open heaven. Remember it said dominion rest is in a place, not a time. When we think about this dominion rest, it's a place where person, your personal promised land of your inheritance is secured. How many is ready for their dominion inheritance? How many is tired of, sick and tired of being sick and tired of receiving the same thing over and over, getting the same result? You know what that's called? Insanity. Today, we want to know that God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, has given us dominion to do the very thing that was taken by the enemy in Genesis 1, 26 through 28. He's given us the legal authority, but one other point I'm going to make is that with the legal authority to walk into those regions that the enemy is hovering or is, 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 is holding captive, we have to know that as we go, we become the author. Someone say author. The root word of authority is author. That means that the author has the copyright legally to, to take dominion, to subdue, to multiply, and be fruitful because they have accepted and received the seal that God through Christ has given them. So now we, knowing what our authority is and our assignment, it aligns us with everything that we need to do to go into the enemy's camp and decree and declare 
aware that everything that the enemy continues to hold me in bondage to, I can just go in and get it. But it takes us to come out of the Sabbath place of rest and enter into the place that God has earmarked for all of us as our inheritance. Hallelujah. It is your call and your destiny on earth to take your dominion over your inheritance. So the enemy can no longer rob us of our time. How many is tired of wasting time? How many is tired of wasting time? Tired of wasting time. It's time for us to redeem time. The next time that someone calls you on your phone and you don't want to talk to them because it ain't time, don't answer the phone. Didn't I say about those instruments that distracts us, that gets off us off focus? We answer a call and the next moment we're flipping through Facebook. Am I in the house today? We don't spend an hour looking on Facebook. We don't spend two hours looking at WhatsApp. By the time we leave that place again, we have to start all over again. That's a trick of the enemy. The enemy comes not other than to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But God came that we could have life and have it more abundantly. So today we're learning to realize that we're the author that gives us the legal authority. And then we have to choose when we use it. So if someone calls your phone that is a busy body and they call you all the time. And they think you, you're, you're their little God. You got to press disconnect. Because until you get the tenacity to press disconnect, you're going to continuously be enslaved to the spirit that is driving the vehicle that's trying to weaken your authority to cause that voice or that, 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 that little bit busy thing to overtake you. It's time to realize that it's okay to tell somebody that keeps wanting to tell you something in your ear that you don't want to hear, that I'm not legal to touch you today. I'm not legal to even give you no advice. I'm not legal because God has not released me to speak to that place today. He hasn't given me the grace. And if I speak it out of time or in the wrong rest, you become my enemy. Today, it's about strategically knowing that everything that he has ordered from the end has already been completed. So we have to invade this place of power and authority with a new strategy. It says here that God's dominion rest for us comes when we have fulfilled your, our destiny. That's only when, when we're the enemies are defeated and we dwell or abide securely in the land that God has told us. When you, we securely abide in the place that God has called us, even when the war hasn't moved, that's when you know that you know that you went in and not only secured your spoils, but God has begun to show you and to reveal to you what is your designated authority and positioning he needs you to rest in. Most of us may look at our, our issues or our problems or things from our natural places that we've lived in or come through as far as problems and think, oh, that was to the enemy or that was to break me it may have been in the beginning but when you're still sitting there and you're still living there and nothing's changing now it becomes an assignment somebody say assignment we must go into this same place a different way knowing that it's now time to make in this war and recover your victory And you're going to the same place. We said here just now that 
Dominion is a place of rest. So if it's a place, guess what? It's the same place that we may still be in, and that's where our inheritance is, but the enemy keeps using it as a weapon against us because we haven't come into alignment of knowing as what the Word says that after the Holy Spirit has come, it's given us power over the power of the enemy to take dominion. No longer do we have to go in and say, Give me my stuff. It's time to command what is your blessing to overtake you. It's time for us to position ourselves in the place that the open heaven begins to work for you. It begins to follow you with signs and wonders and miracles and nothing will be limited to you. But if we don't engage the Sabbath rest successfully because it becomes a duty and not a command, we'll go through emotion. We'll never understand and we'll never receive the dominion rest, which if we look at the root of dominion is dominate. Execute. Begin to decree fly, fire to come. When hell's breaking loose, tell fire to arise in the situation. Call your angels from the north and the south, the east and the west. You don't even have to do anything once you perfect that place, but just go in and subdue it. Presence begins to speak. P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E. His presence speaks because we are P-R-E-S-E-N-T in his presence. So when we show up in his presence, being present, everything must bow to the great I am. So there's nothing that should be limited to you unless you limit it. Amen. How many said I'm ready to fight this battle without fighting? I'm ready. I'm ready to go in. I'm ready and looking. He's looking for the remnant that will say, come on, let's just go in together on the other side. Grab our spoils that we can go to the other side and give to those that are still searching in their wilderness. Hallelujah. Joshua, quickly, 21 and 44. Good, you have it up, great. The Lord gave them rest all around. According to all that he had, he sworn to their fathers and not a man of all their enemies stood against them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. That was a strategy. But when you see that the Lord gave it to them, it says gave them rest first. Until we find rest, we will never find provision. See, because it says that not a man of all their enemies stood against them. Today, we have to see that the Lord has already delivered you from your enemies. They're an illusion today. There's something that you're seeing in the earth realm, but you got to see what God is showing you in the spirit realm. As long as we keep looking at the enemy, we'll never see the work that was completed on the cross. We got to see the blood that got up with all power in heaven and earth and begin to become that effective army to now be that person on this earth to walk in the very place that he decreed it for us to be. So if he gave it to them, he's given it to us. How many today have it? How many frontline warriors, they're not scared to go into the place? Where are they at? Let me see it. 
Because we need those warriors that will go in to the wilderness when those that are vulnerable and weak and they can't go themselves. We need the front lines warriors to begin to speak into the atmosphere and cause this atmosphere to shift to where whatever has this next 20 generations in bondage still yet wandering, we as those that have been called as a remnant must begin to speak. We almost on our final, I'm saying, I tell my husband, I said, look, I'm not doing all the preaching. I'm not doing all the teaching. I'm not doing all that because we need to find rest. It's time if we've been in leadership and we've been in this, we've been over that. But if God is moving and shifting you to a new position that you can impact the next generation that's coming, that you can move into the next place. That he needs you. Because when we get too comfortable in this place, we begin to start striving once again for victory. And we've already got it. That's insanity. Hallelujah. First King 5, 4. It says, but now the Lord my God has given me rest. So that there is neither adversity or adversary nor evil confronting me. So that means that when you enter into a place called dominion, it doesn't matter if the enemy is there. It doesn't matter if affliction is there. It doesn't matter if the storm never ceases. You got to know that you have the ability and the power through the power of the Holy Spirit that was given to you to begin to speak to that place and it must obey. First Corinthians, excuse me, First Chronicles 22 and 18. It says, the Lord has granted me rest on every side, for he has handed the inhabitants of the land over to me, and the land is subject to the word of the Lord, to the Lord and his people. That means that the word shall not return void. But it shall accomplish that in which it was sent. And if we are not praying or speaking and decreeing and declaring the word in the right time and season, you cannot see manifestation. Hallelujah. Dominion rest is not like Sabbath rest. In that place, you enter into a place where you, in dominion, in, in the rest of the Sabbath, is you enter into dominion rest by ceasing your activity. That means that when you've won the war in battle, in your home, in your life, in your fear of failing, and whatever it is that keeps you yoked in bondage, and you can go and just sit and abide in the midst of the same storm, that storm begins to move for you. It'll get begin when the wind's still blowing and the voices are still talking and it's getting on your nerves then, but now has come to from the next, has brought into the now, and you can just abide there. That's a wonderful place. The storm didn't move. You shifted from living in the now of what was an experience. You brought the next that hasn't come forth in the natural, but you you went to the heavenlies, right? And you pulled from heaven and you brought it into the now. When you bring the next into the now, that's when the manifestations begin to flow. It says now faith is what? The substance and what? The what? Is what? Now faith is the substance. Now faith is the substance. Guess what? When we say now faith, when we show up and enter in, we become the evidence of what's not seen because God has to use us. So if we never show up in faith, the manifestation can never come to where we can see. He doesn't want it to just be something we think about. Oh, I wish I could have, would have seen a miracle. 
He said, signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow them that do what? So we can, be we can become, which we are, a walking miracle. All of us in here is walking miracles, even today. We didn't get here on our own. We got here because Holy Spirit ordered our steps, breathed breath, and allowed breath to enter one more time to flow through these veins. And then he says, I'm going to see who's going to serve me. I'm going to see who's going to now that I've given them another second and a third chance. Who now is going to throw themselves back into the fire of the war and begin to take dominion. It's not a place to wear it as a trophy. It ain't something to look, you know, like, oh, we got it all now. We don't need nothing. He's saying that this is a time that the, what needs to speak first is our movement. Words everybody says. Cliches are changing and shifting every day. But when you think about your world personally that you live in, and don't know nobody know the 100% truth but you and God. Amen? So today what I've learned in this journey is time to be raw real. Somebody say raw real. Y'all get what raw real mean? Raw real mean that we no longer putting band-aids on things that have offended us. We no longer trying to patty cake our way through a system. It's time for us to arise in kingdom and be accounted for. That sons and daughters of next 20 generations to come will be coming to this house and begin to call it blessed. Hallelujah. I know that there's generations in here <laughs> that has a voice that is seeking to speak. But because we people are still doing and not being. There's a difference between be doing and being. D-O-I-N-G and being. I'm getting old now. <laughs> I'm just helping telling you truth. It's time to walk not in doing, just, just, just. we got to be. Let me stand still. My reward is already earmarked in glory. But the investment that you're sowing right now is going to determine the outcome. He's calling forth a radical body of believers that will say, I'm not scared. I'm going in because I'm fully persuaded that even though my stuff is covered over by the enemy, I'm going to get it. He's looking for an army of believers that know that the battle's already been won, so there's no reason of feeling as if you're not going to win. It's already won. All we have to do is go in. The open heavens is not just something to say. The open heavens means, as it's spoken in Ezekiel 1 and 1, that the, the prophet had to see. Oh, the open heavens, and he saw. Until you see it, you're going to continue looking at it and never move from faith to faith and glory to glory. He's saying it's time to arise, shine, and give God the glory. Take your rest. To where when you get that place of solitude, you'll begin to birth a new level of thanksgiving. To where no longer you look at a burden as a burden, but you look at it as a blessing. You'll no longer even look at an obstacle as an obstacle. You'll look at it as an opportunity. Because you've already resided in the place to know that it's already yours. 
men and women today of God. Hebrews 4.11 says, let us therefore be zealous and exert ourselves to strive diligently to enter into that rest. What does it profit a man to gain this whole world and lose their own soul? We are only going to experience this dominion rest when our enemies have been defeated. And the enemies ain't the ones that you serve with. You know where the enemy is? He's in his flesh. This is what we got to crucify. It's learned how to make excuses for everything. It's learned how to minimize and cause us to act, to act as if. It's time to the only thing for us to wear today is the mantle. He needs us to be clothed with his mantle, which is his glory. His glory will shine upon us. And even the darkest places. People of God today, Holy Spirit is saying that it is time for us to truly possess our inheritance. But it's going to require a battle. It's going to require intentionality. It's going to require, real quickly, go to that scripture there in um, 2 Chronicles so I can hit this real fast and get finished. 2 Chronicles 20, 22, 27. It says, and when they began to sing to the praises, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were against, against Judah, and they were smitten. Verse 23, for the children of Ammon... And Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the habitations of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. 24 said, and when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude. And behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth and no one escaped. 25 said, and when Joseph had his people came to take away the spoil, they found among them in abundance both riches with dead bodies and precious jewels which they stripped off themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in the gathering of the spoil and it was too much. See, your treasure and your assignment is guarded by your issue. Did y'all hear that? Your, your, your treasures are guarded by your issue. And until you conquer the issue, you will continuously fight. But you'll fight the wrong battle. Because the battle's already been won. But the word says we wrestle not against what? But against what? And against what? And what else? Where's the remnant? Where is it? We wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. Right? That means we don't tussle. We don't have to. We stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We are equipping agents in the earth today that has to arise and my time's up, <laughs> and I'm going to conclude on this point. When they went finally with courage into the, to the battle zone to get their stuff, they had to do something before they went. How many has tried to get your stuff, you got a little bit of it, then you lost it again? You got it and you was a little bit satisfied. They let, you know, the enemy let you try to thank you, you secured it. But then you realize that, man, I only got a little bit of it. It was just something to give me like a little taste. But it's time to get all. He don't want just a crumb. I don't want just a little crumb. I want all of my stuff. 
body of Christ today, we have to go get all of our stuff in the midst of the war that has already been won. And the message as we leave today, I want you to look at Exodus, read it at your leisure, you don't have to put it up. Exodus 17, 8 through 15. And it says, without a doubt, victory run after a tough fight is sweet. When you go into a fight today and you don't fight, there's a new smell. You can smell victory. You don't even have to tell somebody you don't conquered that battle you've been in for 30 years. You can smell it because it produces a sweet smelling savor in the nostrils of God. You know how we spray perfume on and we want them to give us a little good scent? But when the aroma of God just oozes out of you, you don't have to open your mouth. You start talking less. You start becoming and living what you are. Body of Christ today, as I leave this pulpit today, my prayer is, is that you understand that the open heavens that has been opened and will continuously psychically be open. It's already pouring out your ability to go in, subdue, and to seed your possession. Your mind, your body, your, if you got sickness, your body, your health, everything. Come out. Walk in that authority as the author with the copyright. But when someone else comes, with that affliction, power of Holy Spirit shows up and it calls it out and the sins are taken and the healing begins to manifest. Amen. Hallelujah. As I close, it's done. Today we shall say that we shall do what? Decree a thing and it shall be established. No more fighting and striving, but do the right thing, offer the first, your first praise, your first worship, your first offering unto God. Take your Sabbath, see your dominion, that as you recoup them and recover them and discover them and uncover them on this side, you're going to be able to give them to the generations to come. Amen? Let's just give the Lord a hand clap of praise.